The Biden administration is taking a new step to fight climate change with an executive order aimed at making half of all new vehicles sold in 2030 electric. NTV's Nicole Weaving discusses the feasibility of this increase in Nebraska and other options to cut down on greenhouse gas emissions. We can add a lot of EV load without adding a lot of additional infrastructure and costs. So that benefits all of the customers across NPPD service territory. David Rich, the sustainable energy manager with NPPD, knows there are a lot of benefits to owning an electric vehicle. You never have to worry about an oil change, other maintenance that you would typically do. Uh, you know, it's basically an electric motor, very straightforward compared to an internal combustion engine with transmission and you know, all the gears are involved with that. But if more EVs are on the road, more charging stations will be needed throughout the Cornhusker state. If you travel in Nebraska, there's chargers along the interstate I-80 and basically the eastern fourth of the state, there's a lot of chargers. But you get into western Nebraska, northwest, north central Nebraska, southwest, south central Nebraska, and there's limited chargers off the interstates. They've already made some progress with ribbon cuttings in Kearney, Aurora, York, Norfolk, and Auburn over the past two months. And Rich says more are on the way. We're working with our wholesale customers to install uh, chargers at Scotts Bluff, Ainsworth, O'Neill, Thedford, St. Paul, McCook, Hebron, and Wahoo. With certain barriers, though, such as cost and options for electric vehicles, another option to combat climate change may already be available here in the Cornhusker state, ethanol. It's a low carbon fuel. It is the near term solution. Actually, ethanol is the only near term solution if you're wanting to reduce greenhouse gases. Jan Ten Bensel, president of the Nebraska Ethanol Board, shared evidence that an ethanol optimized fleet would have the greatest ability to limit a carbon footprint. An average gasoline car is running about 307 grams of carbon per mile. Um, a Tesla 3, uh, without the battery uh, life cycle added in, is running about 144 and a half grams of carbon per mile. Today, a 100% optimized ethanol vehicle could run at about 115 grams of carbon per mile. These types of vehicles are not on the road today, but Ten Bensel says most cars made after 2010 could operate using a higher octane fuel and run more efficiently, ultimately making this a better short-term solution. If that is the goal of the administration is to reduce carbon, we need to use as much ethanol as possible in the existing vehicle fleet while the electrification of the fleet continues over the next 20 to 30 years. Reporting in Lincoln, I'm Nicole Weaving.